Welcome to the Princess Experience. This is our Dusseldorf special. Now, ordinarily, we'd be interacting with the world of Princess and with the boating fraternity uh, in a hall in the middle of snow landlocked Dusseldorf, uh, having quite possibly uh, the most amount of fun uh, that one could have at a boat show. Uh, we welcome the world to that show and people come from far and wide to visit us and to look at the boats on display, not just from us, but from uh, the incredible brands that are out there in our industry. So for this episode, we thought that we'd celebrate Dusseldorf and uh, have a conversation with Petros Mikalidakis of Boat Dusseldorf. We're going to speak to some of our friends and colleagues in other brands who we ordinarily would be interacting with at the show. And we're also going to join Ross and Gareth for a really deep dive into the S62. Now, throughout this series, we want to hear from you. So please continue to write in to us with any of your questions and if you have any suggestions for future episodes. So now we're going to join Ross on the main deck of the S62. Okay, so you find us on the bathing platform of the S62. Uh, and as you can see, this is a hydraulic, which is a standard feature on this boat. Um, now this can be used for launching of your tender, if you keep your tender on the platform, or jet ski, or even just for swimming off and retrieving divers, that type of thing. But a very useful feature. Behind that, we've got the um, hydraulic uh, garage. So in there you can put your jet rib, um, that's up to 3.3 meters. Uh, it will actually fit the Williams 345, which is a really good big tender to fit on this size of boat, so a real bonus. Um, that obviously goes up and down, and on top of that we have the sun pad to make the most of that space. Nice tow rail around the back of it to keep you nice and safe, and of course a nice illuminated princess crown. Two good sized staircases up onto the aft deck. Uh, on my side there is actually a uh, locker for your life raft. Uh, and then coming over onto this side, we have uh, access to the side deck, but also that third station uh, control. That's got your thrusters, uh, anchor control if you're bringing it in med style, that type of stuff. Um, controls for the lights, uh, uh, stereo control, and then the emergency bilge pumps are under there as well. Coming back onto this side, we have obviously the bar units, a uh, staircase up to that flybridge, uh, a locker underneath the stairs, uh, and then of course we have our seating area. Now, Really nice uh, style, looks gorgeous. Having this stage, the side uh, entrance either side makes it rather um, interesting as well. I think it you know, adds to the, the, the style of, of this whole area. Um, good uh, fold out table, so you can use it as an occasional drinks table or fold it out uh, and it becomes one of your main dining areas. Behind is the sun pad we, we discussed earlier. That's got raised backrests on it to keep your, your heads up, but also you can have this optional uh, sunshade above you. So that, is uh, on an electric arm, they extend out. We've got some support arms that clip into that to keep it a bit more stable if it's a bit windy, but really adds to the whole usability of the area. Stepping forward, past we've got three bifolding doors there, not bifolding, sliding across doors. You've got a pop-up one on the other side into the dinette. So nice L-shaped seat in there, plenty of uh, room to, to eat. Um, You've got a folding table here. So this is shown with a leather top on it. Um, so it doesn't get you know, the ring marks if you're having drinks. Or it can completely fold out and you've got a main dining area. Um, underneath that is the two stools. So it gives a bit more versatility to the area. Uh, and they're stored downstairs next to the master cabin. Coming over to my side, this has got the worn up floor, which is a really nice feature, quite practical as well, especially if uh, you're running outside, you've got potentially damp feet into the galley. Fully equipped, uh, so plenty of storage for knives and forks, that type of thing. Underneath there uh, for your chopping boards, cooktop, uh, oven uh, and microwave integrated there. Uh, and then again, more storage. Behind me is your full height refrigerator uh, and freezer. Uh, and then you have the bar unit, which I think is a really nice place to stand, you know, entertain your guests, converge with the people outside, as well as the people uh, in the dinette should you need them. Um, obviously this can be closed if it's too hot or more like in England if it's a bit wet and damp. Stepping forward, you've got one step up. That gives us our head height in the master cabin down below. Uh, and then you've got saloon and drinks area. Uh, nice big expanse of seating. Uh, you've got a big pull out drawer here. That's got your plates and well, as you can see, plates, sauces, bowls, all kept nice and neat out of the way. Um, 
Okay, one step up here, and that is a gain for your head height. As you go down the stairs into the lower accommodation, that gives you that full head height you need for your, your bathroom. Um, big windows, uh, good storage locker on this side. So I'll just lift that up. Great place to put tablets, mobile phones, keep them out of sight. And then you have a, a wet bar entertainment area on this side. Leather topped, so you, again, you don't get those ring marks, similar to the dinette table. Uh, plenty of nice storage under here for your crystal bottle storage underneath there and then you have a fridge uh, an optional ice maker under this side as well as your AV pop up uh, TV is behind there so press a button and it will raise up automatically um, out of the box coming forward twin helm seats these are fully adjustable um, so you can get yourself nice and up close to the, the wheel should you need to and you've got a great commanding position great visibility both forward and of course backwards so you can check uh, where you're going Drop windows, they're on both sides to let in natural air, but also to be able to communicate with your crew, uh, both forward and aft. And then a nice integrated glass bridge. So this boat has got twin navigation screens, um, as well as an engine instrumentation, engine instrumentation screen on that side. Um, as Gareth's gonna go through a bit later, this boat is fitted with a sea keeper as an option. And then your head unit for that is up here, as well as your control units for your um, autopilot and your tri-data. Thrusters, uh, so balance down the thrusters, throttle controls, VHF, everything you need. And then we've got all this light coming above us from the opening hardtop. Now this is closed at the moment, so we're getting the light, but you can have the fresh air if you open that all the way up. But uh, generally a great boat, yeah, 62, nice to drive, plenty of space for, for daytime cruising, and we'll see how great it is downstairs a bit later. <laughs> Thanks very much, Russ. And now in the studio, we have Petros Mikalidakis, who is responsible for what is quite possibly the greatest boat show in the world. Petros, welcome. We're talking about boat. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kieran. So Petros, ordinarily, uh, at this precise moment in time, you and I would be uh, standing at the, at the end of the, uh, of the day probably on the last day of the, uh, of the show, um, talking to each other about the, the, the success of the show, hopefully, and uh, maybe having a, a gin and tonic together. Uh, this year, it's a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah. We had a lot of talks uh, in the past weeks uh, with the authorities, with exhibitors, and uh, with the associations uh, who are supporting us. And um, what made us very happy is the point that Boot Düsseldorf has become a necessity for the market. Um, of course, it is uh, a fine point for us, but it's also a, a huge responsibility because becoming a necessity for the market means also to handle very responsible all matters, especially in these times where the pandemic is uh, treating us not very well. And uh, from the first point we started the preparations for Bo Düsseldorf, we said that the number one issue for us is and will be the safety of our guests at the fairground. And uh, even if uh, the lockdown light, um, which uh, passed down, uh, would, would be able to, to have a Bo Düsseldorf in January, I don't think that we would have done it with, with a good feeling because safety has to be guaranteed and uh, this time of the year unfortunately we don't have this uh, let's say good feeling you know petros i uh, i don't think i'm exaggerating when i talk about the gravity of your show it is truly remarkable over 2000 exhibitors uh, hundreds of thousands of people come to visit the show during the week uh, it's one of the most powerful shows for us here at princess but you're also on a bit of a mission to really make it a, a, a global show. And we've seen over the last couple of years, a lot of people coming. It, it's the show where more princess distributors take part than any other show in our calendar year. So we do have guests, uh, princess customers, uh, existing owners and interested owners uh, of the future who come from as far as Brazil, Australia, uh, Southeast Asia, you know, how, how are you, growing the show and evolving to cater for that global market? Oh, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's an easy thought. It's, um, 
like inviting best friends to your house and trying to give them the best ever treatment because you love them. There is not one person on the fairground who is not excited about this show and uh, they do everything to make life easy. We are tearing down fences for our guests, meaning that customer experience is not only um, a marketing strategy, but we live the customer experience by doing things, things as easy as possible for our guests and for the exhibitors. And that is why people love to come to Düsseldorf even in January, and the feeling is created by a magic from the exhibitors, the guests, the products. It's just unbelievable being here and it's a pure excitement. So uh, even, or because maybe sometimes weather is, is dark and rainy and people are coming to the show and suddenly the day is lightening up. They see things they like, they see things, they, they discover things they want to do. And this is the whole magic of Bo Düsseldorf. It's a cooperation uh, of, of of all people involved, the exhibitors, both the, sort of the guests, and that's why we we had this uh, huge success in the past, and we will do everything to continue with this success and to make our guests happy. That's great. Petros, thank you so much for your time uh, joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to join Ross once more on the S62. <laughs> So here you find us in the master cabin of the S62 and as you can see it's full beam as you'll find on most of our boats nowadays. Um, it's got those signature big windows which are a big bit of glazing. Um, you can see the curvature that's from uh, the knife windows as we call them which run all the way forward to the bow. It gives that really beautiful silhouette of the boat. Um, opening porthole uh, and then behind me you've obviously got the rather nice seating area uh, and then you can see the designers have really gone to town. They've got this lovely lighting feature. Um, lots of mirrored surfaces and textures to give it you know, lots of uh, space and reflection of light. Big uh, main bed, uh, master bed. Um, underneath here we keep uh, the water tank, uh, so it's at the lowest point on the boat possible, as well as pull out drawers. So things like uh, laundry, uh, linens, that type of thing can be kept under there out of the way. On the opposite side, obviously another big window. You can't really see it as well because we're next door to another boat, but um, the blinds are down to give you an idea what that's like, as well as the, the draw storage units uh, and then full height hanging wardrobes on the opposite side. Back over to my side again and we have a, um, as well as a, a storage under there, we have good pull out drawer here uh, for knickknacks, getting things out of the way and then great size TV. Behind the TV we have uh, a standard, you have a washer dryer unit on the lower section. Above it, should you want to, you could have a, a separate dryer unit. Uh, if you don't have it, there's more uh, storage, uh, trying to make most of every, every space. You may have seen on Bill's talk uh, on Koipal about how we're trying to make this cold moulded feature. So just worth noting, yeah, that's a nice worn up piece there that's been moulded around the bulwark, not bulwark, sorry, uh, uh, the side of the, the shower, it's behind there. Um, one step up uh, and then you have got your ensuite. So sliding door, so pocket door here to make the most of that space uh, and all the things you could you, you go associated with an ensuite medicine cabinet, big window, and you can have a heated tower rail should you want to. As you come up another step, uh, there's a good storage unit underneath here, uh, so you can pop shoes, dry goods, whatever you want to do, making the most of that uh, staircase. Into the foyer, plenty of light above me from those bridge windows, so floods this area, uh, makes it a real nice, uh, nice spot rather than a, uh, a dark area as it was in the past. En suite for the forward cabin, but also your main day head. So all your guests can use this one should they want to. Um, it stops them using your area and keeps it nice and private for the master cabin. One step across, and I come into the twin cabin. So it's a little darker than normal on here because we're tied up next to a 72 foot boat on, on this side. But you can see that big window that does let natural uh, light into here and gives you that feeling of space as well as two opening portholes. Above that is more storage, so you've got a storage rock above me. Behind me is a nightstand. Now, these beds slide together, and you would, that nightstand is replicated on the other side, so you can still keep that storage in somewhere to put your, your drinks at night, should you want to. Outboard is your control unit for your uh, stereo. That also controls a DVD player for the TV behind, uh, and again, there's pull-out drawers under both beds here. Moving forward, you've got full-height 
uh, wardrobe uh, for hanging. And then as I mentioned before, your TV on the bulkhead just here coming out into this uh, forward cabin. Um, big knife windows going up forward to get, let, again, all that light in, storage above them, um, and really nicely decorated. You know, the, the, the dealer who's spec this boat has done a great job with their owner to, to get some nice colors. Behind me here is that ensuite. Um, good size shower. This is the Jack and Jill door, as we call it. So you've got two entrances, depending on who's going to use that, that room. Behind where you are is the hanging wardrobe. Uh, and then on my side, you have a, a nice mirror. And behind that, more storage, pull-out drawer, be used as a vanity, uh, should you need to. Um, again, there's big windows, nice size bed, storage underneath here. And um, really is a, a nice place. I don't think any guests would be uh, uh, upset about spending the night in. And now we find ourselves here in the Princess Lab, and we're going to have a conversation with Ollie Taylor of Williams. Well, it's been a while since uh, we've caught up. We ordinarily get the chance to, uh, to meet up at, uh, at boat shows in various parts of the world. Uh, in, in, the, in the situation of uh, 2020 being a, a rather strange year, we find ourselves now here, starting off 2021, uh, at exactly the time when we'd ordinarily both be uh, rather stressed out and running around in the Messe uh, in Dusseldorf. Um, it's, it's great to have you, uh, Oli, and, uh, and thanks for joining us. Would you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and also you work for one of the most fantastic uh, tender companies that I know of, uh, Williams uh, Jet Tenders. Do you want to uh, also talk a little bit about Williams? Yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, we specialize in making the little boat that goes in the big boat. So with Princess, we've worked for many, many years, um, kind of working very closely in those fitments on board. So we've got a range of products from 2.8 meters with our smallest one, which is aimed to fit on board a 40 foot yacht, all the way up to the Evo jet, which we now make, which is designed for a 40 meter super yacht. So uh, yeah, we've got a full range of 14 models that cater for all of the princesses that you guys make. And Ollie, you know, I know that most, most businesses um, uh, faced uh, quite a challenging year last year with, uh, with COVID. Um, and uh, certainly I know that, uh, that you guys uh, still continue to, uh, to, to manage uh, to produce boats for customers, your customers all over the world. I know that because uh, all of our customers always uh, tend to opt for the Williams and we, we also design our, our garages in and around your products. Uh, so there's this symbiotic relationship between the two of us. What are you seeing in, 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 your, in your sector? What, what are customers asking for mostly these days and what do they want out of their Williams? Um, high performance still remains pretty, pretty high up there. People want a product that will work very effectively as a tender to get from A to B, to move their guests, to move luggage, all those bits of odds, but they also want something that is a bit of a toy to keep people on board entertained because the big boat's great, fantastic, gets to amazing places, but with the tender, you do get to go a little bit further, see those places that no one else gets to go to because you can go into really shallow water, um, but also do all the water sports, so the wakeboarding, the mono skiing. Um, so we're seeing a lot of people still wanting that balance. And then we, we do a lot more customized tenders than we previously ever did before. So now we've got our kind of configurator tool online and it's easy for people to visualize what's possible. Um, we've gone from being quite a, a standard production builder of tenders to now doing a lot of very highly customized tenders, but still within our production environment. Yeah, that's great. And, and I mean, I think that kind of making the boat unique to not just yourself and your own personality, but also to accompany uh, the larger yacht as well is, is certainly something that we've explored. Uh, we've looked at doing some limited edition princess uh, jet tenders with you as well in the past, and we know that they've gone down a storm. Uh, you know, what, what, are, what about new technology? Are, are customers wanting, you know, any kind of autonomous uh, development in, in tenders? Are they, are they looking at alternatives to, you know, the regular powertrains? What, what are you seeing there? Yeah, we get, I would say, weekly requests for an electric or a hybrid uh, product, which we are working on uh, behind the scenes. It's got its challenges, um, mainly to do with the energy density available in batteries at the minute and having a product that's still light enough to fit on board the parent yacht, um, but gives you enough range. 
And the other challenge we've got to overcome in that space is the power generation on board to make sure you can charge the, the tender as well. Uh, so it's always got you know that energy capacity to actually be used because there is a safety element with tenders as well. Um, in other, terms of other technology that people are asking for, we get all the usual stuff. So we do lots of AIS fitment now, now on board um, to have that kind of connection between the pair and yacht on the tender. Um, and we are looking at some systems with remote monitoring on board the tender. So when people are away, um, they know that the, the tender is still safe. Uh, but we generally see whatever's being asked for on the parent yacht in terms of uh, chart plotters, VHFs, all of the kind of navigation equipment, we can fit all of that on board the, uh, the tender as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't say there's one kind of thing that people are really asking for other than the electric propulsion, which uh, is a little way off for us at the minute. Yeah, I think with all of us, but the, the really exciting thing is that you're having the conversations and you're developing a strategy and you're looking internally as well as externally for ways to, uh, to, to find solutions for it. And uh, as are we, as you well know. Um, and that's, that's the biggest part of the journey, isn't it? So, Ali Taylor, thank you very much for joining us for this episode. It's always a pleasure uh, and we hope to see you again soon. Great. Thanks, Kieran. All the best. So here you find us on the flybridge of the S62. Um, obviously the smallest, uh, as we said before, um, S range we do, um, but you're not being uh, compromised at all up here on the flybridge. Uh, nice staircase up from the aft deck, uh, good support rail right around here to stop uh, any little ones going down or even the bigger ones, as well as a, a, a hatch to stop the weather going down there or indeed you know, to make it a bit safer if people are up here for the day. Um, good seating area, uh, you can get a good coming of, of guests around there undercover from the elements so you can protect yourself from the from the rain more importantly from the sunshine with this uh, optional hydraulic bimney now this is a lovely feature press a button and it deploys itself automatically and then you've got a couple of stays that go back here two more this side and then two more up the front so it's a real solid piece of a uh, piece of kit um, table can be foldable should you want it to be this one's a, the fixed option uh, and then we move over to uh, the barbecue you've got to drop in a uh, cool bin there so you can put your drinks in there and not worry about you know, things falling out if you open a fridge uh, if you've been in a bit of bad weather and then the full sink barbecue has got the Kenyan grill which is I think I've said before you can take it all apart so it's really easy to maintain you can sort of take that off to clean and it's got a drip pan underneath and all that can go in the dishwasher should you want it to close that underneath and underneath here we've got the bin now this has been painted, this boat is fitted with the allure pack, so there's a little bit of extra detail in, so you've got the paint on the wet bar, the helm's got some painting on it, and there's a bit more extra features on, on the upholstery. Stepping forward, again, like I said, good amount of space. You come to, as you know by now, one of our features is, is this daybed area. So you can have it as a, as a seat, as, as I am now, or you can pull out a, a GRP uh, plinth underneath here and turn it into quite a nice sun bed. So you've got a backrest, get out of the wind when you're running, talking to the guy or the lady driving the boat and really enjoy the, the flybridge for what it is. Moving over to the helm. Again, as, as with all princesses, it's a real good commanding position. You've got great visibility fore and aft. Down that staircase, if you're bringing it in, you can actually you know, see where the transom is. You can see all the way back if you're bringing it in backwards or alongside. Easy access to all your navigation. Complete glass bridge. So on this boat, we've got two Ray Marine screens. Uh, you get one as standard, and you can have the second one should you want to. And then a full integrated uh, engine instrumentation on the on the other screen there. VHF, your controls for your for your navigation, and all your switches and gauges. Easy at hand. Um, but lovely boat to drive. And as Gareth is, has said or is going to say, you're powered by the the V8 1200 horsepower MANs. So plenty of power, uh, and it's a it's a lovely boat to drive, you know, it's well balanced, good, easy uh, grip for your, your throttles, nice visibility, uh, you can see your, the people up on the foredeck, you can imagine being able to chat to people, you know, and even with the opening the hardtop, you can see people down inside the boat. Great boat, S62, be very popular for us and uh, very happy with how things are going. And if you want any more information on this boat, please get in contact with your local dealer. Uh, there's multiple boats around the world that you can, you can go and see. Thanks very much. So here it is, the engine room of the Princess S62. And here I am at the aft bulkhead of the engine room with the sole hatch to the cockpit above me here. Um, as you can see, I've got plenty of room around me here in the entranceway. Um, and there's plenty of room down between the two engines here for 
your morning checks and just general access uh, when you need to get down here for maintenance. Um, what can I say? Well, the boat comes as standard with the 1200 V8 MAN diesel engines and they propel the boat through standard shaft configuration onto five blade bronze propellers. Uh, you can also go for D13 1000 horsepower Volvo engines if you're not so concerned about that top end performance that the S62 delivers with the MAN engines. Uh, pushing 38 knots, subject specification on this boat, and it's a really fun boat to drive. One of my most favourite boats uh, in the range, actually, to, to go to sea on. Um, behind me here on the centre line, we've got a 17.5 kilowatt generator. That's the upgraded generator on this particular boat. The boat comes as standard with an 11 kilowatt. Uh, people tend to go for the upgrade when they go for an air conditioning system or a gyro stabiliser. On each side of the boat here, you've got the fuel tanks that deliver diesel to the engines. So this boat's got a 3,250 litre capacity. There's a crossover between the two tanks, so you can easily manage fuel levels if for any reason you're running on one engine or you have to fuel from one side or the other, depending on where you're going to refuel the boat. On the forward bulkhead, we've got dual-plex fuel filters for the engines, which again, an upgrade from some of the smaller boats in our range and make uh, maintenance a little bit easier on the boat when, when she's in service. Um, fire suppression system down here is standard, like on most of our boats, with uh, automatic activation and a manual override in the cockpit as well. And you've got your two um, engine management control panels down here on the forward bulkhead as well. Um, behind me on the port and starboard side, you can see the exhaust mufflers. This boat's got the straight-through exhaust out the transom, which makes the boat a lot smoother and quieter when she's underway. Uh, and on this aft bulkhead here, you've got the 60-amp battery charger that charges the house bank and also the engine start bank, and that's all managed by a uh, changeover switch uh, as and when required. Below that, we've got DC power distribution in these two panels here, and just forward of both the exhausts, but aft of the fuel tanks, we've got stacks of compressors. This boat's got the air conditioning system fitted on board, um, and each area has got its own dedicated compressor. It's a split gas system, and this system's good for cooling the boat up to 40 degrees centigrade. Um, ambient temperature outside. Aft of the engine room on the starboard side, we've got an optional fourth cabin on this boat. So that can be used as a, an occasional crew cabin or a, a den for uh, kids or whatever you want to use it for. It's got its own independent bathroom compartment as well with shower facility, sink and head. Um, underneath the deck here where I'm stood, you've got access to your two bilge pumps and your seawater inlet and strainer housing for your air conditioning system. Everything's quite easy to hand for maintenance down here. The engines are handed, so checking the oil and the coolant levels in the morning is no big deal. Um, and on the side of the generator set here, you can see access to the strainer and your, your coolant check expansion bottle as well. Um, if you do want to have a Sea Keeper on this boat, we offer the Sea Keeper 9 for stabilization. That's mounted on the port side in a separate lazarette space underneath the deck to, to port of the garage compartment. Um, and that's also where the batteries are housed on this particular model as well. The garage on this boat protrudes just slightly into the engine room, as you can see behind me here, and that's good to accommodate a, a, a tender up to 3.3 metres. The hydraulic platform that raises and lowers on the uh, transom of this boat is also standard, so that's a nice feature as well, being able to have your jet ski on your bathing platform and a good-sized tender uh, tucked away inside the garage as well. So that's it from me in the engine room of the S62. As I say, one of my favorite boats in the range to drive. It's a really exhilarating boat. When you put her into a hard bank turn between 25 and 30 knots, there's no better feeling. It puts a smile on anybody's face. Um, and she's just so well proportioned, this boat. Easy to handle being only 62 feet, but plenty of space and well proportioned throughout, whether it's engineering layout, accommodation layout, or that terrific flybridge uh, up on the top deck there. Okay, so we're here and once again we are joined by Bill Barrow in the studio. Bill! Kieran, as ever, it's a pleasure to be here. Bill, do you know, I have uh, been quietly walking through Dusseldorf, um, encountered someone on the street, uh, had a conversation with them whilst waiting in line and um, mentioned Princess. And they referred me to Mr. Dusseldorf. Now, I know that they were talking about you. You no, are. I don't, I don't think so. You are, no, Mr. Dusseldorf. So. <laughs> this entire episode, we've been talking to the various um, incredible individuals, uh, both responsible for the show and also just participating like we do in the show. It is 
a staggering boat show. Let's talk a little bit about that. You've been doing it for how many years now? Um, I think my first just law for around uh, what was Marine Projects then, Princess, was about 1999. Um, but then it was sailboats, and it was a totally different ball game in about Hall 17. In 2005, 2006, Dusseldorf wasn't like it is today. No. You know, it wasn't as international. You know, if you saw people from France, you would do well. Yeah. If it was the States or the Far East, it was amazing. But yeah. the reality, it was a Central European winter show. Yeah. Um, and really, it's gone from that, where we were fairly small fry, into what it is today. Something where remarkable, isn't it? We're really big fish. There were shows that we've done in the last couple of years together where, you know, 247,000 people visited the show mm. during the week. Mm. Um, you know, you would come to the princess stand and there was a mile long queue uh, waiting to register to get onto the stand. Um, you know, I mean, it is a staggering logistical accomplishment and feat that, it, that, they, that they tackle each and every year at Dusseldorf. From that perspective, tell us a little bit about when that journey starts uh, and when you can sort of take a sigh of relief and stand on the stand and it's fully operational and all of those people are enjoying products. I think you've got to really say that if you look at Dusseldorf, it's complete and utter madness. Yeah. Why would anybody do a boat show in the middle of Germany in the middle of winter, 200 miles up the Rhine. Yeah. I mean, it really just doesn't make sense. If you put that on a piece of paper now and said, we're gonna do that boat show, everybody would look at you and go, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, But it's not like that. Um, it has developed. And I think a lot of it is around about the management of the show. You know, the management of the show have been focused on what the industry wants. Yeah. You know, and so many shows don't do that. Yeah, and they're also fortunate in that the management of the show also you know, we, we, we've spoken to Petros uh, today. Yeah. Uh, they, they also, it's their facility. So they're sort of in complete control and, and that gives them a little bit of an advantage over any other shows that take place in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we start, you know, we think about it a year in advance. What are we going to take to the sort of? Yeah. And generally, and generally run from there. Yeah. Um, we've put in, I think for about seven years, the biggest boat, we put in about 398, a couple of 32 metres, 35 metres. You know, you've seen the array of what we put in. Um, it's, been, it's been truly amazing. And that, that's really where, where the success of, or failure of the show sits for us, isn't it? I mean, we, we put so much effort into this. To move a big boat like that, you know, it takes months of planning mm, and, uh, and, and weeks and weeks of, of manpower. Absolutely. You know, where else could you do it? Where else in the world could you see, you know, that number of, that number of boats? Where could you do the comparison? But the comparison is so different to an on-water show because on water you can literally just float it in, put some dressing into it, clean it, that's it. Putting it into somewhere like, like to stuff, you have to make the whole thing look like a piece of furniture. Yeah. You know, from the keel upwards, it has to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. So really December, beginning of January, are, you know, press the button times. That's when we all think, what's the weather like? You know, how are we gonna transport 10 boats to Dusseldorf? How are we gonna get them up the Rhine? Is the Rhine in flood? Is the water too high? Is it too low? You know, there are so many factors into it that yeah. involve so many different people to make it work. Yeah. So Bill, in, in the many years that you've been doing this, does, is there something that stands out, something unique or a feeling that you have towards it um, that you can share with us? I think we could share lots of things with you, Kieran, but whether it would be, <laughs> whether it be right and proper is another matter. Age appropriate. Um, <laughs> uh, there are, I think probably moving the 35 metre was probably one of the biggest events we've done. Um, that is the largest boat, boat that's been on display in Dusseldorf for very many years. Um, you know, 115 feet, 35 metres, 172 tonnes. Um, casually go and pick it up in Mallorca. Um, ship it to uh, Dusseldorf <laughs> in the middle of winter, um, stick it on a stand and make it look beautiful, and then return it to the owner in a better condition than we picked it up. Yeah, yeah, that was that was madness. That was absolute madness, and it was you know it was eye-wateringly spectacular and um, nail-biting at various times. Yeah, Bill, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Um, 
uh, we didn't uh, we didn't unpick anything from uh, from our conversation about Dusseldorf, which was uh, irregular or untoward Absolutely in any not. stretch of the imagination. No, no. There was no killer pitch mentioned, was <laughs> no, there? No, 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 no Alt Vera, no killer pitch, and no Schwanahaxer. So we're okay. Thanks very much, Bill. Uh, Bill Barrow, who uh, is our international sales manager and is also responsible for uh, the Dusseldorf Boat Show. Mr. Dusseldorf, they call him, and rightly so. Now, this brings us to the end of this episode, and we very much look forward to seeing you in the next Off the Princess Experience series.